Good morning, everybody, and um, thank you very much for joining this morning's webinar. Uh, I wanted to start by introducing myself. Um, I'm Amanda Wolf. I'm a senior marketing manager at Macmillan International Higher Education, uh, and I'll be um, managing the webinar this morning. Um, before we get started, there are a few points of housekeeping. Uh, via the webinar software, you'll be automatically muted, um, but we're more than happy to open that up if you'd like to um, get involved in the, uh, the conversation. Alternatively, you can also um, make any comments or ask questions during the uh, in the chat feature as well. Um, as mentioned, we'll be recording the session um, so that if you want to watch it again afterwards or um, share it with any colleagues, um, then please feel free to do so. Um, so let's make a start now, and I will hand you over to the host of the webinar, uh, Deepmar Sternard. Deepmar, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, hello, everyone. Good to see you. Um, we're not seeing each other, but uh, good that you're here with us today. Um, yeah, I'll be running the webinar today for you. Um, just a quick introduction of uh, who's your webinar host. Oops, that's too far. One back. Sorry. Amanda, please help. Can you, can you get me one slide back? Yes, here we are. Okay, so that's me, as you see uh, on the left-hand side. My name is Dietmar Sterner. Um, I was a, a practicing manager uh, for 10 years, so I, I managed several newspaper companies, uh, publishing companies, book publishing companies, and managing was a lot of fun, but uh, actually at one point in time I thought teaching management is even more fun uh, than managing yourself. So for the last 10 years um, I've been a management teacher. I'm a professor for international management uh, at uh, Carinthia University of Applied Sciences, which is in the south of Austria. Um, and I, I want to make my, my management courses as interactive, engaging and practice oriented as possible. Um, and for that purpose, I try to find a book that suits my um, requirements, that would be very high, uh, highly practice oriented, very accessible in style, but still um, being grounded in academic research, but very strongly oriented towards helping our students to build their skills, their skills in managing themselves. That's the topic of today's webinar for the next half an hour. Um, but also for leading others and, and managing organizations. Um, actually, I, I didn't find any book that met my requirements, so I, at one point in time, decided to write my own. Yeah, here it is. Um, it's called, here it is, yeah. It's called Effective Managing, uh, Effective Management, Developing Yourself, Others, and Organizations. And uh, I was lucky to find a wonderful publisher uh, with Macmillan International Higher Education, uh, Red Bull. And if, if you are um, ever trying to or have the idea for a book, I can uh, very much recommend uh, to work with them. You're uh, just a wonderful, congenial partner uh, for any author. Yeah, so that's about me. Um, and in the book, uh, I'm basically covering all managerial topics from the role of a manager um, to leading other people, managing teams, um, coming up with a strategy for your organization. Uh, making decisions, uh, managing for results, uh, also uh, topics like uh, becoming an entrepreneurial manager, um, innovation management, etc. Um, yeah, many, many more topics, whatever you need in, in order to build your managerial skills. And one chapter is included here about uh, managing yourself. And that's the topic we're, we're talking about here. Um, so, let me go on. So what you hopefully will get out of this webinar is that uh, we will discuss a little bit about what we as management teachers can do in order to help our students to better manage and develop themselves and to do so in a very engaging way, uh, that, uh, a way that brings them into it and that uh, opens their mind in, in, in terms of uh, thinking about what they do and how they could uh, improve in, in, terms to, uh, in terms of becoming more effective in their managerial role. Yeah, we'll also see some tools for supporting students in, in that endeavor. Um, and maybe we'll even learn something about uh, how to better manage ourselves in our professional roles along the way. So let's get started. Um, 
first of all, why do I include self-management in my management courses? Um, I think not everyone is doing that. Uh, it's, it's usually about managing other people, managing organizations. Um, I usually include one session, a longer session, uh, on self-management in my management courses. Why? Uh, first of all, because of my own professional experience as a manager, I've seen that management can be a very demanding job. Uh, it's usually long hours. Henry Mintzberg once said that managers work at unrelent an unrelenting pace. You, you have to deal with a lot of information. There's always conflicts coming in, lots of things you need to do. Um, and if you're effective in your self-management, this can help you to avoid stress and, of course, clear focus. The focus is very important uh, because management is also about setting the right priorities, setting the right priorities for your organizations, which means that you must be able to set the right priorities for yourself first. And then we um, there's some research uh, that shows that people who know why they are able to succeed and who are able to deliberately work on the sources of their performance, nurture the sources of their performance. They're usually higher performing in this role, especially managerial roles. Um, so uh, if we want to educate students uh, to become good managers later on, um, it can help a lot to help them to work on themselves and manage themselves first uh, in order to become more effective managers. And last but not least, some of the principles that we can learn in, in self-management can actually also be transferred to the organizational role and can also help you in order to manage organizations better. So this is some of the, the, the reasons why I actually include self-management in my own management courses. So um, here's my approach to teaching self-management. Actually, it's just one approach. You will have your own. Maybe we will have some uh, time also afterwards to, to, to share your ideas, to share your approaches. Um, what I do is I very much believe in um, experience-based learning and I, I believe in, in learning where people are challenged first to think on their own or to do things on their own before we actually come with some ready-made concepts or tools and, and show them how things work. Um, so basically what I do is um, first I try to give them a structure of what we need to, to know, um, which, which areas to focus on when we talk about self-management. I show that to you in, in, in a second, which, which areas I, I focus on there. And then I usually use self-reflection exercises in this field. So I want them to um, think about themselves, uh, give students the opportunity to reflect um, on their own personal effectiveness and, and to improve it. And only then I would make them familiar with some tools, examples, methods, et cetera, that you can find in the literature. And they're usually more open after they have thought about themselves, about um, yeah, what it all means for them, um, to then also um, yeah, take in some of the, the ready-made concepts. So that's the, the basic approach. Um, yeah, and there are actually four areas of self-management that I'm focusing my, my, my teaching on. Uh, the first one is knowing yourself. Um, so you, you can only manage what you know, you can only manage what you understand. So the first thing that you need to do is to, um, to understand yourself. And especially to understand your strengths, goals, and values. I will come to that in a second when we dig a little bit deeper with uh, the four topics uh, that are on this slide. Here. The second one is setting the right priorities, which is basically about knowing what to do and what not to do. Uh, usually, the what not to do is the more difficult part here. Yeah, I'll, I'll also show you some tools and how I, I try to um, get my students a little bit more into the, the priorities-based thinking. Uh, then, if you know what to do, if you know your strengths, if you know your goals, um, if you know your priorities, you also need to manage your personal energy levels. Uh, it doesn't help you that you know what to do, but you don't have any energy to do that. Uh, and we also talk about resilience here. Um, and the, the fourth like um, basic focus area is how to develop your skills and ability, abilities further, um, especially your managerial skills. So um, let's take a look um, and, as I said, dig deeper in each of those areas. Knowing thyself uh, is the first one. 
why know thyself? Um, I usually start my, my lectures on self-management in asking my students whether they know what Delphi is. Uh, Delphi, it's, here's part of Delphi. You probably know that, um, you know the story about the Oracle of Delphi. Um, in ancient times when the, the old Greeks wanted to know what their future would look like, they would go uh, to Delphi and there was a priestess called Pythia and she was kind of uh, surrounded by fumes, whatever these fumes were, and she was telling you uh, what the future would, would, would look like for you. And before you came to this oracle, there was a forecourt, and there was an inscription on the forecourt saying, know thyself. And uh, yeah, this little story just like opens the mind of the students, uh, because I, I then asked them, what, what, does, what could that mean? What could know thyself mean in that context? What are your interpretations? And they usually come up with interpretations like, it's good to know your strengths and weaknesses, your goals, your desires, your habits, before you go into the future, before you know where to go. But also to know your limitations and maybe understanding yourself can also help you a little bit um, to understand others better. So this is just to, to get people into the topic. And then very quickly, so this, these are basically the, this is a more stylized way of, of, of showing this uh, uh, Delphi Oracle for court. Uh, knowing your goals, your strengths, and your values. These are actually three basic areas that management students should, from my point of view, uh, know. Effective management, effectiveness, is generally about reaching goals. So first of all, you need to know your goals. You can only reach your goals well if you have the right strengths that help you in reaching your goals. So it's also good to know your strengths. And your values can also help you to judge, especially in decision-making processes, of what is important and what not important. Um, so I try to go through these three aspects with my students in the following way. And uh, here are the first few instruments that I use. Let me just quickly open all of this. Actually start with this exercise. Um, I give students the exercise to think about their life goals. That might be quite a big thing to do in the beginning, um, but it makes students think. Um, so I ask them about what they would like to achieve in the long term, in their working career, uh, for their family life, their self-development, but also for the, the contribution to the community. And this is usually a point in time where um, people come out of their comfort zone. It's not a usual thing in a management course to think about the future of your family or um, your contribution to, to the community. Um, the important thing here is that people start thinking about what are the big things that they want to achieve in their life. Um, because once you have that, once you have thought about that, you can break things down into smaller steps. Um, so the second task that students will get is um, to take one of those life goals and to think about which intermediate or more proximate goals they could have within a year that brings them closer to their life goal. So is there, is there yeah, a yearly goal that can help you to achieve your life goal? And then the third step would be to look at those yearly goals and to think about what are the next steps the concrete next steps tomorrow or next week that you have to take in order to come closer um, to this year to go. And this will help them to get a focus on the really important things, on the, on the really important goals. And to connect the smaller goals that they have for tomorrow and next week to their yearly goals and to their life goals. And here we already see that um, what you can do in self-management uh, is very closely related to what you do in the management of organizations because it's basically the same. You're As a manager, you're setting up strategies for the future and then you're trying to long-term strategies, you're trying to break them down into more proximate goals, usually budgets for the next year, whatever, and then you have to determine what the right next steps are. Uh, this exercise, by the way, is something that I usually just do as a self-reflection exercise with my students. So uh, I don't require them to talk about the results of this exercise with others. Although I usually ask at least one person uh, whether they want to share um, their uh, cascade from a life goal to a yearly goal to next steps so that everyone 
uh, sees how that works in a concrete example. Yeah, so once we've worked on the goals, next step is to work on your values. I also have a little exercise here in the book. Um, here are just some values that you can have. You can add your own. And I just ask students to choose five of them that resonate with them, five of them that they think are the most important ones for them. And then to bring them in an order from number one, the most important one, to number five, um, the, the least important of these five ones that, that they deem important. Uh, this is something where it, it helps um, to, to put students into groups afterwards and to share a little bit um, about what their main values are and why these values are important for them um, and why they have chosen these particular values. So they come into a discussion about what are their values. So we, we have goals and values which give us some kind of direction, which give us some kind of um, yeah, the, the, the framework of what is important and what not. And then we come to the third part, which is discovering your strength. And that's usually something that students love. Um, very often, I don't know what your experiences uh, are here, but very often I talk to students or even graduates, um, and if you ask them what they got out of their studies and what not, they say, well, I got a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge, but I, I still don't really know what I'm good at. Um, and it seems that young people, Kind of yeah, long for um, trying to find out what their strengths are. And here are some, some exercises that I use. There are some others in there too, but some exercises that I use to help them in this endeavor. Um, first of all, um, it's just an exercise based on, on um, an article that was written by Peter, Tr Peter Drucker, a very famous uh, management uh, thinker, um, article cost, uh, called uh, Managing Yourself. Um, it's just about asking people a few questions. Do you work better when you're on your own or do you work best when you work with other people? Do you prefer to be the decider? Do you prefer to advise other people? Do you prefer to work in more dynamic environments uh, or do you work, uh, prefer to work in more predictable environments? And I just ask people to, yeah, to rate themselves on, on the left or right side. This might seem very um, straightforward, but if you think about it, it's not. Yeah? For example, I thought for, I don't know, 35 years of my life that I work best with other people um, until I found out as an academic um, that I'm actually even stronger if I work on my own, if I can write books, do things like that. So um, that's, that's a process also of, of understanding yourself. So to um, get a step further, uh, the second question that I ask my students is to think about one event in your life, it could be during your education, in work, in sports, wherever, where you performed exceptionally well. And then think about, in the second step, which step, which strength, which of the strength contributed to achieving this exceptional performance. Um, and this is also something where I ask them to share it with their colleagues afterwards. Um, in order to yeah, discuss your strengths and find out more about it. Um, we have even more sophisticated methods. Uh, this is a method where you combine a self-analysis, sorry, went too far, where you combine self-analysis with feedback uh, from others. You can find this on the companion website to the book. Actually, it's open for everyone. I think um, you, will, um, you will get the link to it later on. Um, I won't go through it uh, just to, to watch the time a little bit. Um, and then it's about matching your goals and strengths in order to become effective. Yeah? So you know where to go and do you have the right strength that uh, match with your goals, yes or no? And if not, maybe you have to change your goals or you have to work on building your strengths and competences. So. That's the first part uh, or the, the first focus area of self-management is really understanding yourself in terms of goals, values, and strengths and how these things go together. Second part is managing priorities. Um, and uh, the first thing I ask your students here is, uh, who of you is good in time management? And usually some of them um, yeah, raise their hands and said, I'm quite good in time management. And then I said, well, as an academic, I have to first look for the definitions um, so I looked up the definition of time in a dictionary 
And time is actually, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. And then I asked them, well, if that's time, is that something that you can manage? And then people notice that it's actually not time that you can manage, but priorities, what you do and what you don't do in the given time that you have. So um, I then came up with a um, statement that, that or something that Peter Drucker has written also. And that is first things first and second things. And then it, the whole class is usually saying second, which is not the right quote because uh, it's second things not at all. So the idea is one of the secrets of being effective in managing yourself is being able to focus your energy on doing the one right thing and not doing a lot of things at the same time and being distracted by so-called urgent matters, which is actually another word for uh, other people's priorities. So again, here I have an exercise to activate students, yeah, to, to make it more experiential for them. And the exercise that I use here uh, about setting priorities is the following. I ask my students, assuming that you get one completely free day each week, for one year, what would you do with this day, with this new day that you get as a gift? And then they try to think about what they actually would do. They share it amongst each other, say some want to do some projects in work, others are more interested in, in some things that uh, they do in their leisure time. But these are usually things that are important for them, but they don't have enough time to do. So it's about, this is usually things that should be priorities. And then there's a second question. Assuming that you would have one day less each week for one year, what would you stop doing? So someone takes away time from you. What do you need to, to stop? Uh, again, they can discuss it with their neighbors or in small groups. And then step number three would be to compare these two lists and to see whether there is anything on list number two, the things that you would stop um, and take one of out of list one, one of your priorities or things that you would like to do instead. And then step four would be to think about the concrete steps that could make it happen. So the concrete steps where you could, what, what you could do to focus more on your priorities instead of the things that you don't want to do. Yeah, so again, First, the experiential exercise, only afterwards I come up with a concept. Here's a concept also by Peter Drucker. Um, future before past, there are things that should have priorities, opportunities before problems, doing it your way instead of just following others uh, and aiming a little bit higher. And we discuss the concept afterwards. It's easier to discuss the concepts once they have experienced um, what it means in their own um, uh, personal situation. Good. Yeah, then we usually discuss the main enemies of priorities management. So what holds you back from working on your priorities and the enemies are usually overloading yourself and time wasters and distractors. Um, reverse delegation, that someone is delegating things to you that they actually shouldn't because it's their job um, and email overload. And then we discuss strategies of how to deal with that. Uh, you can find uh, many of these also. In the book. Okay. Uh, just leave that out quickly. Yeah, and then I share some good practice examples. Here is one that I actually came across um, a few a few days ago or a few weeks ago. Um, you probably know Jeffrey Archer, the, the bestseller author. Um, I'm reading his books from time to time uh, in, in my leisure time. And he has actually written more than 30 books. Um, and, and they're like really fake books. I mean, this has 400 pages, but he's writing like 800 pages. And he's writing one of them every year. Um, I'm totally unable to do that. Um, and what he's doing, for example, he's always taking two hour blocks. He's not working like day and night. But he's just working in two hours blocks. And what he does is he focuses fully on his writing task in these two hours and tries to get rid of all distractions besides. Uh, and he's using an hourglass, a two hours hourglass, in order to make sure that within these two hours, um, he's not distracted. And he's actually having four of those two hour blocks every day. Well, um, if we just manage one of them, 
uh, and if we're just 25% as productive, that would actually already do something at least for me. Uh, so that's that's one of the best practice examples um, that I also try to share and discuss them uh, with my students. So some examples uh, or some ideas about um, yeah, uh, setting priorities. Then we go through energy levels and resilience. So, um, for example, what are sources of stress for managers? Uh, what can managers do um, in terms of uh, increasing your energy levels and getting your stress level down? On the one hand side, you can do some things off work, like uh, yeah, exercise, sleep, you know, all these things. But there are also some things in work that you can do in order to um, get energy or at least stay um, at a high energy level. Um, I won't take too much of your time. That's why I'm trying to get over the things very quickly now. Um, here's another task uh, that I give my students, identifying the sources and drains of energy. So I just ask them which work-related activities give you energy and which non-work-related uh, activities give you energy and which relationships give you energy. So once they have reflected on that, the second part of the exercise is to think about which of these activities are draining your energy. And once you know that, uh, once you, you have an overview of what gives you energy and, and what takes energy away from you, um, you can think about which action steps to take in order to get your energy levels higher. Um, so for example, take one of the activities uh, and think about, or one, one of the things that give you energy or take energy from you and think about what you could do next week in order to change your habits in this field in order to uh, get to a higher energy level um, also. Okay, then we also talk about coping with setbacks um, and uh, there are different models that you, that you can use there too. Okay, um, yeah. The, the fourth topic uh, that is covered both in the books as well as in my, um, in my, in my self-management lectures is how to develop yourself. And here again, before I come with any development methods or, or tools, I start with a simple question uh, that hopefully makes my students think, and usually it does. And the question here is, think about one situation in your life when you are developing your skills and abilities to a very high extent within a very short period of time. And then reflect on why did you learn so much during that period? And the answers are very interesting uh, because usually I would say 80% plus is the same answer. And the answer is I developed the most when I was out of my comfort zone, when I was challenged with something, when I had to jump in at the deep end. So, um, and once they have reflected on that, we can go to a model again that shows how you develop yourself. And that's actually a model that is very strongly um, derived from the work, uh, from the scientific work of uh, Kay Anders Ericsson, a professor of psychology, um, who studied uh, what top performance in different domains, music, sports, whatever. Um, did in order to become to, the, uh, to, to get to the top level. And challenge is very important there. So you need to set yourself challenging goals that are outside of what you're able to do at the moment. That's how you grow. You grow with challenges. Uh, but it's not, not only having the challenge, but it's very important also to then um, act in a way that uh, Ericsson called deliberate practice, uh, meaning to think about what you need to focus on in order to succeed in that challenge. So take out one focus area, think about how to improve this one focus area. Uh, then try to get feedback, um, ideally from other people who are around, who are experienced, also from people you're, you're doing something with, uh, and then reflect about the results and uh, try to correct if necessary or take on the next challenge in order to develop yourself up and up. And up. So, of course, we then uh, try to discuss this in, in, in a more detailed way. You should spend like 15, 20 minutes to, to go through that cycle. But it's a lot easier to go through that cycle with them if we have already discussed how they developed 
with the exercise before, we can always uh, reference to individual cases. Um, and uh, if people have the feeling that you reference to them and to their personal experience, their personal situation, they are also usually more open um, to digest the concepts um, that you, you uh, uh, try to convey to them. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, we also have in the book, uh, we have case studies. I, I sometimes use case studies. I must admit less in the self-management field. I use them a lot in all the other management uh, fields, but you can do that in self-management too, to just uh, read about uh, or watch videos about managers uh, explaining how they, um, uh, what they do in self-management. Uh, here are two examples from the book. I also have older examples. I have Benjamin Franklin in there, for example, who was a very, values-driven person and devised a system to give feedback to himself and have clear order in his day, etc. So that's also something that we can use um, in order to uh, make uh, students reflect about how, how do others manage themselves and what does it mean for me? Can I take that over? Does it make sense? Is that something that is generalizable, yes or no? Okay, so this was actually just a very short tour. Yeah, we just had this uh, half an hour of um, my approach to um, how I try to, to, to get the topic of self-management across to my students and, and try to involve them and try to uh, engage them in this topic. It usually works very well. Um, so we get very, very good feedback um, of students um, on the self-management um, skills development sessions. Um, you can also find the whole chapter on managing and developing yourself in the book um, with all the topics that we very quickly discussed now, knowing this, uh, uh, yourself and managing priorities, managing your energy levels, developing yourself in a lot more depth, of course. Um, yeah, uh, just to see, yep. And uh, Amanda was so kind as to um, also uh, put two links here. Uh, first of all, we have a link where you can get sample copies of the book, yeah, which are available under this link. Yeah. I would be very happy if, if one or the other of you would be interested in the book and, and yeah, take, take a look uh, if, if that might be suitable also for, for your teaching purposes. You can find many of the exercises um, that, that we discussed in the book. And I put on um, very extensive teaching notes also, also in the field of self-management, but also in all the other um, fields on the companion website, along with uh, self-management exercises um, and, and other teaching aids. So if you're interested in that, uh, please turn to the, to the companion website that Macmillan uh, Higher International, Educa uh, International Higher Education set up for the book. Yeah. Uh, that's it uh, from my side. Uh, that was the, the input side. Um, I would be very happy if you have any questions um, to discuss your questions, or maybe if you have your own experience um, of, of, uh, in, in self-management, if there's anything that you would like to share with us that can uh, improve and enhance our own teaching, um, you're very welcome to, to share your experiences too. So yeah, thank you very much for now. And I hand over um, to Amanda for um, yeah, taking questions. Thanks very much, Dietmar. Um, I, there seems to be one question that has come through so far, um, which is from someone that is teaching um, a fairly traditional um, sort of theory-based management course, um, but they want to incorporate more um, sort of skills-based content. And they were asking if you have any advice about where they would start with that. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, my advice is start with the book. Yeah, it's it's all it's all um, uh, it, it is centered around how to how to uh, create skills um, or how to enhance your skills. Um, although the theory is there too, so actually the starting point in all the um, topics that are um, yeah centered around uh, effective management, not only, not only self-management. For me, is always to think about one activity in the very beginning um, that uh, is a challenge for you in terms of you have to think about something or do something. So uh, what, I, what I usually do is, also with, with other um, management-related topics, 
I try to put people into certain situations first that managers would also be in. Um, so if, if we take something completely different, um, I don't know, cash management, you know, if, you, if, if you want to improve the cash position of your organization. So I, I don't come in and tell them about the concepts, um, but I ask them, if you are a manager and if you would have the task, you come in to, into a completely new organization and you see the cash, cash, cash position is very bad. Um, if you're in this position, what would you do in order to improve the position? And then I, I usually try to put them together into, into small teams or just peers together. Um, you can do this even with, with big groups yeah, or with, with, with larger audiences. Um, you know, turn to your neighbor, discuss what, what you would do in this situation, and then tell me what, what, what you would do. And then we start discussing about it. And uh, once I got them into thinking about it, and you can do this with any topic, yeah, leadership. Yeah? You have a person who doesn't perform uh, as well as um, you, you want them to perform, or you, you have the feeling that they are not motivated. And then you can tell them about motivational theories, or you ask them first, what would you do as a manager? How would you approach this situation? In terms of motivation, for example, what I what I do is I, I also split the class. I usually ask them, who of you is motivated? And then I see on one side of the class that more people raise their hand. Um, so um, what I do is I actually ask them to think about one situation where they were really, really motivated. And I ask the other part of the, the, the group about one situation which made them really demotivated. What was it? What was behind it um, that, that you were motivated or demotivated? And then we share this with each other. I mean, you don't ask everyone, but you ask some of them and you get the first picture. Uh, and only then would I start with coming up with a concept? Why? Because then they just open their mind for this issue. They already have discussed it with their colleagues. They have thought about it themselves before. And then they know that it's not too easy to do that. So they are more open to um, then also take on the concepts and, and, and link these concepts. And that's what I also do. I link these concepts to their personal situation. Um, and in this way, um, try to help them to see how the concept relates to their their own skills and, and to, to building and enhancing their own skills. Great, thank you. And uh, an additional question has come through, um, which is around if there's any content about lacking personal confidence. Um, so this person says that many of their students say, I can't do that. Um, and it's concerned that they're giving up before they really try. And do you have any suggestions for how that could be approached? Yeah. Well, that's that's very closely that's very closely linked actually to to one of the concepts that, that I've shown before. Um, this uh, self development cycle. Um, you can develop yourself only if you get out of your comfort zone. If you do something new. So when developing means doing something that you haven't done before. Um, of course, it takes some courage, but what I do is I, I, I just tell them some, some stories of, of, of people who developed out of uh, yeah, not being talented at all um, into, into very talented, uh, into being very, not, not, not into very, uh, being very talented, but into um, uh, developing a high degree of expertise in a certain area. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just about trying. It's just about getting out, trying it out. Um, and what we also do here is we, we try to think about what's the worst thing that can happen to you, um, which is usually one of the, one of the, the uh, the negative feelings that they have. Can, can I just go quickly back to the slides and see if that works? Because I have a good concept for that too. Bang, 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 bang. Add it in a second, just a second. This one, the ABCD model. Um, that's actually a model by a psychotherapist called um, Albert Ellis, uh, very famous in psychotherapy. And the idea here is that people 
meet something that is 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 not uh, some adverse event in their life, yeah? something that is going wrong, yeah? and then they think that this is really a problem because whatever, right? And this brings uh, emotional consequences to them. Um, so they are feeling bad about it, or they are feeling insecure. That's the topic that you were talking about. They are feeling insecure because they believe that there is something bad that could happen to them. And it's actually not the lack of self-confidence that is a problem, but the belief that they have about the bad things that can happen to them. And what we do then is to try to dispute these beliefs. Uh, we, we try to find out whether this is really the case. Yeah? And one thing to, uh, to do so, or one, one approach to do so, is the question that you see up here, what would happen in the worst case? So when you fail, for example, I don't know, people don't like to present. Yeah? They say, well, I'm not talented, and let's leave it to others, I'm not self-confident. Uh, then we discuss what's the worst thing that can happen to you and uh, yeah the worst thing is, is usually uh, not as bad as they think uh, because even if you for example in a, in a managerial context the worst thing that can happen to you is that you lose your job you know? and if you then ask people okay um, could you cope with that what would you do afterwards you, know, you would still be alive you would still be healthy you could just take another job if that's the worst thing that can happen to you um, then everything else wouldn't be as that. So um, you can just try it out. Yeah. And usually the worst thing doesn't happen at all. Um, yeah. So we are we are trying to discuss this. Of course, we do it in like a longer and, and more experiential way usually also. But we are trying to discuss several models that help um, people to um, build their resilience, um, to yeah, be more confident in um, taking on things and uh, in, in yeah, coping with, with more difficult situations also. And usually it's just a matter of fear. And we just need to get this fear out. You know? Just try it out. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, in one of the case studies, uh, Samar Singh uh, that we've seen here, Samar said, uh, very, um, um, very uh, successful entrepreneur, he said, if it works, it works. And if it does not, we move on. And I think that's a good kind of general attitude uh, that can help you in this case. Great, thank you very much. Um, so I think we're out of time actually at this point. Um, so just really right. wanted to thank everyone for joining today's webinar. Um, and also thank you very much as well, Deepma. I think um, that was very interesting and hopefully um, uh, the, the people on the lines have got something out of it. So thank you very much, everybody. And um, we will share a copy of the recording with you. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, also, Amanda, for organizing this, this webinar. And uh, thanks for everyone who is joining in. Um, yeah, um, all the best from Austria and have a great day. Goodbye. Bye.